Well, sweet. Thank you so much, Martine. Excited to have you on the show. Hey, I'm so excited to be here. This is an honor. Thank you so much. Martine, I was wondering, we were just talking about this, like there's sometimes moments in your life where you really draw a line. Where where would you say was the moment you drew the line and you were like, I'm going to be an entrepreneur? <laughs> um, it really was the op- when I realized that being married was not like the white picket fence. Like my husband has lots of hobbies and he loves to hunt and fish and all those things. And I was, we had one side at the time and I remember like, you know, he would go away on the weekend and go hunting or fishing. And I was really that resentful mom and wife when he would go and enjoy those hobbies. And so I'm like, you know, I envisioned, you know, the white picket fence with him and I spending all of our time together. And he's just a very independent person. And so I remember just being upset over and over and over again about that. And I called a woman um, that was a mentor of mine. She still is mine today. And of course, I'm complaining because that's what we do. We're mad with our, our spouse. We complain, call our friend and complain. So I was complaining, complaining, complaining. And she was listening and listening. And finally, she said this. And it literally was the one statement that changed the course of my life. She said, he's not wrong. You need to find something to do. And that silence was exactly what she heard on the other end. Because I'm sitting here thinking, wait, like us women, we're supposed to stick together here. Like he's totally wrong and I'm right. And I'm just really thankful that she was willing to risk the relationship with me and tell me what I needed to hear and not what I wanted to hear. And it wasn't in that moment that I was like, oh, and now I'm going to be an entrepreneur. But I knew at that moment that I had a decision to make. I could continue to be the bitter and resentful wife and mom, or I could do something different to be better and to, you know, be in a healthier relationship with myself, number one, and then also with him. So honestly, if she wouldn't have said that to me, I don't know where I would be today. I don't know if my husband and I would still be married. I don't know if we would have had our second son. I don't know that I would be an entrepreneur today, helping other entrepreneurs. So it really was that one statement. That was the pivotal moment for me when I'm like, okay, now I've got to find something to do. Not that I didn't, not that I needed more things to do as a mom, right? We always had things to do, but it was just that having something for myself that I could use my gifts. I loved helping people. I loved encouraging others. And my family has been entrepreneurs. So it was really that moment that made me start looking for what could this be? What is the thing that I need for me? I feel like everyone needs another person, woman in their life to do exactly what your mentor did. He said that they, she, she told you what you needed to hear, not what necessarily what you wanted to hear. And yeah. that's so powerful. I'm curious for you, Martine. So you had that conversation that like mic drop moment where you're like, oh, okay. Like she's right. <laughs> um, And I, and you just said like, you know, you loved encouraging people, which is what led you into what you're doing now. But what were some of the steps after that to help you realize like, what, what is the thing that I want to do? What were some of the processes that led you to where you're at today? Yeah. So at first I was like, okay, I just need to be, I need to get a group of women and we can just go to movie nights or something like that. And so I just really kind of got into action once I knew that it was my personal responsibility, right, to create the change that I was looking for. And so that worked for a little while, and then that kind of fizzled out. And then my sister-in-law shared with me, so my background is in direct sales, so I was in direct sales for 16 years. So she shared with me this company, and I um, had these really cute personalized gifts. I'd never seen anything like that before, um, and it was $99 to get started. And I thought, okay, that's I can spend that at Target on any given day, so what do I really have to lose to, you know, start my own business. It was a faith-based business, which I loved. Um, that was really important to me. And it was about getting together with women. So my, my goal at the time was I knew I needed connection to other women, right? And I also needed something that would get me out of the house a couple of nights a week to be in community. So I literally called the company. I mean, they didn't have a website. They had a website, but it was very like bare bones. And my husband was like, go, please. Like he was totally encouraging it. My mentor was like, this might be the thing. Um, that you need. And so I just really jumped in with both feet. I had no idea what I was doing. I had no sales experience, really. I had never built a business before, but I had just had a real, real compelling reason why I needed this to work for me. And I knew that this could be a really fun thing for me to do. So that was kind of my leap into entrepreneurship. Wow. How did you see your relationship shift? Like whether it was, you know, with your kids or with with your husband after actually leaning into that side of yourself again. Yeah. I mean, it just allowed him to go and freely do those things without having to come home to the guilt trip, right? Because that's what I was doing. I was laying the guilt on really thick. 
And um, now I had something for myself. I had that connection with women who were kind of in similar season, right? So a lot of them were my age with little kids. And so, you know, we were able to uh, connect on that level. So for him, it was the dynamic was I no longer was sucking the life out of him. I was no longer looking for him to meet all the needs and do all the things for me. I had a sense of, you know, taking ownership and responsibility for a lot of those things for myself. And then, I mean, my son was one when I started the business. So I mean, all he knows is entrepreneurship, both of them. That's all they've seen us do. But um, it, it helped me to show up as a better mom because I did have that, rele- not release, but just the other parts of Martine, right? Not Martine the mom or Martine the wife. It just gave me the opportunity to be just Martine, to show up and have fun, hang out with some girlfriends, make some extra money, and then be able to return back. We we need that break as moms and as as dads. We need that because we lose that our identity. And that's what I see a lot uh, with women in entrepreneurship and men is on pursuit of success or in pursuit of success, whether that be the mom trying to, you know, take care of the kids or the dad, you kind of lose yourself in pursuit of some of those things. And you forget like, who am I, right? Like, what do I like to do for fun? What are the things that I'm interested in? And so um, that really is what kind of got me into the coaching and the speaking that I do now is that loss of identity. Wow. That's powerful. I feel like me and Chelsea, I know you guys met, I think I read that in your bio, met in high school. Um, and mm-hmm. so we met in high school as well. And and we did long distance for like five years. And so yeah. we kind of did the, the, the same thing where we like, after the long distance, we came together, got married. And it was like, let's spend every waking minute with each other. Let's start a business. And we ran a business. We ran our life. And it was just like, for, I think for a couple of years, mm-hmm. we didn't do anything else. It was just like always together. And then I yeah. think you started first, like doing other things, like going mm-hmm. and like, okay, being with friends and doing things. And it was a big thing for us to like, wow, there's like actually so much like uh, mm-hmm. good bubble over benefits of our relationship yeah. that happen from us getting separate sometimes and having those <laughs> own kind of ways we fill our cup. And so we've really learned to prioritize that. I want to talk more about the identity thing because I feel like we we see that, you know, we we train moms as well and, and yeah. we, we see early stage moms as well as seasoned moms, moms who are kids going off to college for the first time, then coming to our program. And I, I think just speaking to the younger moms, we've seen this happen with 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 the more seasoned moms where they kind of did put all their identity, all their identity in the mom bucket. And and the mom yeah. thing, it never goes away, but it, it, it right. shifts, right? It, now mm-hmm, the kids mm-hmm. are not in the home and it shifts. Mm-hmm. And now they're like, whoa, for 20 years, I was mom. And now who am I? And they almost like are in this like lost season for a section section of their life yeah. where they're figuring out now what, <laughs> right? right. Uh, do you encounter <laughs> that with, with the clients you're working with? Um, and and how would you how would you combat that? How would you come against that? Maybe it's an earlier stage uh, of motherhood, or maybe hey, my kids are about to go to college. What would you kind of say to start to shift that? So that it's not. I mean, it's it's going to be a hard transition, uh, I think. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, yeah. Because it, it's going to take some adjusting to. Uh, however, I feel like if you start doing some work earlier, it could make it easier. Right, right. I'm definitely from the mindset of, you know, if we prepare, prepare well, we don't have to do repair, right? If you're preparing ahead of time, then you don't have to do the repair work. And a lot of times what happens is they have been pouring out for so long and they their identity has been so wrapped up in the kids. And honestly, this is where a lot of marriages dissolve because they're not even dating their spouse anymore. Like both parents kind of dive into hundred percent, like take care of the kids. And there's, you can be both, right? You can be all three, a great wife, a great husband, a great entrepreneur and a great parent. And you just have to make sure that you don't lose those other pieces of you in the process. So I say, start now for those, someone who's listening and your kids are babies, like start now, like what are some things that you need to schedule in because if it if we don't find time, that's what I hear from a lot of moms. Like, I don't have the time. Like, we don't find time. We create the time for what matters most. And you are a big rock that if you don't put the big rock in first, if you've heard the Steve, Stephen Covey um, example there, then you're going to, your time is going to get filled with all of the other little things. And then before you know it, that big rock has not been um, taken care of for so long that you do wake up one day and your kids are gone. You look in the mirror and you're like, who is this person? And you're looking at your spouse going, who are you? Like, Hey, I haven't seen you in 20 years, you know, while I've been raising the kids. And so it kind of does create that a lot of times that midlife crisis that you hear people talking about. And a lot of it comes from not preparing ahead of time for it, not taking the time to invest in 
um, hobbies, things that, that they jo- enjoy individually and together. We just get so wrapped up and the culture is screaming, put all of your energy into your kids, right? And it just seems like the politically correct thing to do. And I'm not saying, I mean, I spend great time with my family, with my kids. Uh, you just have to prioritize in each season. So when they're little, obviously it's very different than mine are 16 and 19 now. And I'm like actually fighting for their time because they're like, I'm ready to spread my wings and, and fly. So I think just start now. You know, what are some things you can schedule in every single day and week that are just for you? I mean, I remember scheduling date night with my husband because if it didn't get scheduled in, it was so easy to fill it with all these other things. And it wasn't that we didn't love each other. And I remember telling my coach, I'm like, that is so unsexy that we have to schedule in date night. And she's like, but is it getting done? I'm like, yes. And she's like, then that's the most important thing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know? You're actually spending time together. Same thing with like scheduling in um, specific time with each child. You know, I told her, so what kind of mom am I I, that I have to schedule this stuff in? And she's like, you're a mom who cares enough to schedule it in. And um, I just think that was really powerful for me to kind of get over the uh, shame or or whatever negative self-talk you have about yourself that you have to schedule these things in. But as entrepreneurs, we live by our schedules, right? Like we do everything that's important to us gets scheduled in. So um, for women, I always say, you know, you don't miss your hair appointment because you schedule it in and it's really important to you. Your date night should be the same. Your time with your kids, you know, you want to create that same um, importance in scheduling it in. So that was kind of a long answer, I think, to a short question, but that's what I have for you. Yeah. I I love that because you're telling someone you can start right now. Like what is the one thing or the two thing, like, especially if you have young kids and I've seen that too, Martine, like I remember when we first started scheduling date nights in, because when we didn't have kids, it was kind of this sporadic thing or we'd be like, let's go to dinner. And we're like, oh, I guess this is a date night, you know, yes. but it totally yeah. <laughs> changes when you, for the better. Like I, if there's, you know, people listening who aren't like having kids yet, I love being a mom. It's the best thing in the entire world, but it does take a little bit of a shift. And I love that getting away from the guilt and the shame of like, I have to schedule this in. Like, why do I have to schedule this in? I think you've brought in so much freedom to that. It's like, no, you actually care about it so much that you're going to schedule it in and you're going to make this a priority. And I agree if you can start now, wherever you're at, whether you have babies, whether you have like, you know, five-year-olds all the way on up, if you can start now to get it in that practice. I love the saying consistency compounds. And it's like, if you can create that system, the consistency of scheduling those things that are really important first, um, it's going to be easier in the long run. And um, I I just love that. Yeah. I'm curious. It's so true. One thing I also noticed about your story, Martine, is that um, you had a mentor like pretty early on. I mean, Mm -hmm. even before business, I feel like that sometimes, sometimes people get into business and then they're like, now I need a mentor. It sounds like you have kind of had that for a while. Where did that start? Like, where did it start? Like you learning to go, hey, I'm going to I'm going to get some feedback from someone who's willing to tell me the hard truth sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, really, it's part of my faith journey. When, you know, I became a woman of faith, that was the very first thing that my um, pastor said. He's like, you need a woman who can walk this journey with you because you're going to have a lot of questions. You're going to have a lot of doubts. You're going to have a lot of fears. Like you need someone who is ahead of you who can can speak into that, right? And so, I mean, I'm an, I'm a doer. Like you tell me this is what I need to do. I'm going to go do it. I'm so coachable. So when he said that, I immediately, and he just recommended a few people. And I went to lunch with her and she's always been um, the calm in the storm for me. And she still is, you know, one of my mentors today. And I have personally ex- just experienced the power of mentorship. Um, whether it would be even in uh, grade school and in high school, just there was always like one or two people that were ahead of me that I'm like, I, I see what they're doing. I like what they're doing. I want them to help me, you know, teach me what they're doing. And I also believe like you're reaching up and then you're also reaching back and pulling someone up. So, so at, at all times I've had someone that's mentoring me and then I'm also mentoring someone else. I just believe that's how life is um, doable and doable with joy because you know, we need to be able to lean back and, and pull someone else up. My past struggles become my present purposes to help other people get through that, which is why what I do I'm so passionate about, because I know I'm not the only mom. There's someone listening right now 
who've had some of the same feelings I had towards her husband, right? And they're just resentment and bitterness and, and waiting for someone to come in and rescue her, right? Um, and it's a personal responsibility, right? It's a personal decision, but we need that person who cares enough about you to tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. Wow. Look for mentors, just like Martine explained. I love that. Um, I know we were talking a little bit off camera right before this about leaning into your strengths as an entrepreneur and finding people around you um, that can support those strengths. And I remember the first time that Steve and I were big on outsourcing, like outsource your weaknesses. And, and even in like a business partnership and marriage, like Steven and I, like we are definitely have learned to lean into our strengths, but I spent so much time in our early years, so focused on weaknesses and like almost pointing those out, like Steven, why can't you be like me and and I, I I don't have this instead of which is so opposite of what we should have been doing but just goes to show like learn from our mistakes but I we really lean you know into what are our strengths and what is this person's superpower and I know that you talk a lot about that and teach your students their strengths and you use a particular tool um, called the pro scan so I would just love to know like what is that how what are some things that get unlocked in your students while leaning into their strengths because I've never heard of this tool and I'm very curious. <laughs> I uh, found out about the ProScan, I guess about three years ago, I had um, an opportunity to take it and I, I've done all of the, I've done strength finders, disc, Enneagram, all of the things. And I, I just love them all. I mean, I don't know who does, who doesn't love that kind of information, right? To kind of tell you a little bit about yourself. But for me, the ProScan, um, a couple of things that set it apart. So it's a personality and performance assessment. And it measures your strengths of your personality. The whole thing is about strengths, which I love that. Um, it's not about your weaknesses, how to make your weaknesses. It's like, these are your strengths of your personality. Um, which one is your strongest one? So you can really lean into that, right? Whether it be building a business, being the mom, being the husband, being the wife, like it, just lean into the superpower. Um, it also has a real-time functionality piece. And this is the part that I use a lot with my clients because it will pretty much show you where your stressors are coming from, like which areas of the strengths of your personality are you not in alignment with? So if you're trying to be someone you're not, that's going to require a lot of energy for you. So for example, um, it measures your dominance of your personality. It measures your, um, your extroversion, your pace, which is like your patience trait and your conformity trait, which is your systems and structure trait. So I have very low dominance in my personality. But to be the CEO, at one point I was CEO of two companies, um, you have to be a little bit more dominant, right? You have to have that authoritativeness. You have to have that directness, that take charge. It's called the take charge traits. And so I'm pretty low in that, um, but I'm really high in my extroversion. So again, going back to relationships is kind of my superpower. So I built both of my businesses based on the relationship piece. Um, but I remember seasons of comparing myself to people who were super strategic, super numbers driven, very like take charge, get it done type of people and be like, what's wrong with me? Like, I'm not like them. Right. And I spent a lot of time, wasted a lot of time and emotion around trying to be someone that I wasn't. And it just takes a lot of energy. And that that's where a lot of the burnout comes from. So being able to see in real time how my clients and my students are operating in their strengths or not is a big piece of the work because we want you to be working optimally. It doesn't mean you can't be. I mean, I definitely for the last 17 years have those days where I'm dialing up my dominance because I am the CEO, right? I don't have someone telling me what to do. I have to do those admin days, those CEO days. But for me, it's really good knowledge to know that that's not how I naturally operate. And so on those days, I need to make sure I'm putting in pockets of fun, right? Putting in pockets of things that do fuel me because those admin days, those CEO strategy days really do exhaust me. Um, so that's just, people don't understand that information. You're so more empowered when you have that information because then you're not saying, what's wrong with me? Or that system didn't work for me. If you're low in conformity, systems and structure is not going to be your strength. It's just not. And that's Okay. We need people who are big picture thinkers that can think outside of the box or a little bit more creative. We need all kinds, right? There's no right or wrong personality. It's just understanding what yours is, what your strengths are, and then utilizing them to grow your business your way. 
As entrepreneurs and parents, convenience is key. But that doesn't mean you should have to sacrifice quality. For years, we nerded out on coffee, trying to get the highest quality, but that takes a lot of time, weighing the beans, getting the right grind, getting your water to the perfect temperature. And so when we had kids, we kind of shifted to the pod system, right? And it was a major downgrade. That was until we found X-Bloom. X-Bloom works with the best roasters around the country and their machine truly brings the specialty coffee shop experience to your home. If you love a good pour over, I highly recommend you check this out. You can elevate your coffee drinking experience while keeping up with your kids. If you're ready to transform your mornings, head to rainmakerfamily.com slash deals to get started. That's Rainmaker makeyourfamily.com slash deals. Do you recommend your students say if they're having their first hire that they take this test? And is there a way to kind of measure like, oh, this person on, a, you know, on paper would be very different. What do you recommend like using a tool like this once they know their strengths on and hiring like their first assistant or someone? A hundred percent. Like you'll be able to fill the gaps, right? And, and, and if you do have a team, um, there's a team scan report you can use u- utilizing the pro scan, which will actually show you the strengths of your team. So like my husband has multiple employees on his team and we just did a team scan report where it showed them their individual strengths. But now as the CEO of his company, he can see where the strengths lie as a whole and where are the gaps to fill, right? So if you want to hire your next person, you know the gap to fill. Also, do you have the right people in the right seats in your company? You know, if they don't have um, high extroverts and you probably don't want them out front talking to customers when they come in the door, (laughs) that's just not going to be, you know, it's going to be hard for them. They're going to have to dial their extroversion way up and that's going to exhaust them if they have to do that on the day, on the daily. And so it really does help people align careers, align positions within careers and companies uh, to make sure you have the right people so you don't have a turnover. You know, it's expensive as business owners to have a turnover with employees the training you have to do and all of that. So absolutely, um, when it comes to hiring, you want to make sure that you have the right people to fill that position. Yeah. I'm curious on like one of the things I know you're really known for with with your coaching and and, and everything, the workshops and things you put on is is really helping people get back into momentum when they're feeling stuck. Mm-hmm. Can you take us back to, I don't know, a moment in your entrepreneurial journey where you felt really stuck Um, And, you know, what mindsets or tools developed out of that season? Yeah. Well, you've heard the, I call it my Pat story. Pat's my mentor. So that was my first, first stuck story, really feeling stuck in the marriage and not feeling fulfillment. And, um, and then um, I would say five years into that business, I grew up very fast, went to the top of the company within the first four years. And um, I remember I was sitting on a couch and I was preparing a training for my team. So I led a large organization of women and I always do the work first before I take them through it. And what I read, uh, Jack Canfield's book, The Success Principles. I don't know if either of you have read that book. It's a really thick book. Don't be intimidated by it for those that are listening. Um, but one of the things in there he has to do is rate like the 10, I think he has the seven key areas of your life and set goals for it and rate it and do all the things. So I do that with my clients as well. But there was this one area that I kept skipping over and I thought, okay, I'm, I'll come back to that. I'll come back to that. And finally, it was like the night before and I said, okay, I have to, I have to work through this section. I can't avoid it any longer. And it was the section on hobby and recreation. And I remember sitting on the couch and my husband was sitting in uh, a chair beside me and tears were just rolling down my face. And I, I said, I don't understand. He said, what was the matter? And I said, I don't, I can't think of one thing that I would like to put in this section. Like, what's one thing for me that I would want to do for fun or re- recreation? And it was in that moment that I realized that I was stuck again. The same kind of feeling I had when I started the business, I grew this that was supposed to be more like a hobby for me into this huge career that I loved, but I was back uh, feeling stuck and resentful. And I remember thinking something has to change, right? And usually it's the mindset first. And I was really come to understand that being stuck is a mindset. It's not a position. And we're one idea away implemented from, you know, uh, that stuck story from that stuck moment. And so we can keep telling ourselves we're stuck, we're stuck, we're stuck. I could have done that on the first stuck story with Pat. I could have done the same thing as I'm sitting on that couch. But instead, I decided to take one step. What's the next step? What's one thing I can do? Get out of self and into service. 
So for me, it's what can I do to serve someone today? That kind of got me out of my own, you know, mindset of, of being stuck. And how can I go serve a client today? How can I go serve a customer today? How can I serve my children? Like just get out of self and into service is, is really a, a big piece for me. But I think just understanding and having the awareness that it's a mindset issue, it's not necessarily a skill set issue. It's you're telling yourself you're stuck and guess what? You're just going to get more and more stuck. So realizing that it's a mindset change first, most of us try to change our behaviors first without checking our thoughts. Like, what are we actually thinking in this moment? And uh, so that's how I, that's how I do it. I check my thoughts first and foremost. And then I think what's one small step that I can take to move forward. That's good. <laughs> Super good. I think the last question, I'm hitting a lot of different topics here with you, but I'm trying to pull all the mold out for our yeah, listeners. So good. The other thing I'm seeing in your story is probably a pretty big transition between direct sales and what you're doing now. I don't know if that was like a, like a chop one off, start the other, or it was more of a, a gradual thing. I mean, it sounds like you're building a lot of these skill sets even in that business. But I know some of our listeners, we get this a lot where they're, I'm, I'm feeling like there's another thing for me. Like I'm in a transition mm -hmm. season or like, I feel like I'm supposed mm -hmm. to like, Almost, you know, we call it pr the pruning sometimes. I'm really, I almost want to have to trim this thing so I can mm -hmm. grow this thing. Did you have a moment of transition there or was it more of a season? Walk us through that and some of the mindset that went into really going all in on what you're, what you're doing now. Yeah. So when I had that moment where I had lost myself, right, I knew I had lost my identity and lost who I was in the process while I was preparing for that training. I worked through that, right? I took my next steps and kind of got on the other side of that. And then... I started noticing the same look on so many women's faces because I had the opportunity in direct sales to be in the homes of a lot of women. And I coached, you know, hundreds and thousands of women. So I started to see patterns. I started to see the same blank look, the zombie walk. And that was really what, you know, uh, propelled me into, I've learned something. Like I said, my past struggles become my present purposes. And so I did start feeling like there's more to this, right? There's more to me than what I'm doing currently in my direct sales business. There's more to me that I want to offer. There's more women that I want to reach. And I love coaching. I love speaking and all of those things. And so I really just started taking, again, a baby step. Okay, what would that look like? I don't really want to go around and travel speaking because my kids were young at the time. And um, But I do, I do think there's people who need to hear this. And so I was just sitting at my desk one day, and I remember just feeling this compelled to go Facebook Live. And this is before Facebook Live was like the thing. I don't even know if it's a thing anymore, but... Like it, I remember sitting there going, I'm not doing this. I'm not prepared to do this. I have no course. I have no notes. I don't even know what I'm going to do here. But I literally just felt like get up out of the chair and go push live. And so I did. And I just started sharing my journey and how I felt. And I said, it's, you know, and the response was overwhelming. There were so many women that I did not even know I was connected with on Facebook. They're like, that's me. That's me. I, yes, I feel that. Yes, I feel that. And so then I was like, okay, there is something here. And I don't know what it's going to look like. And it's totally evolved even from there, from then to where I am now. But that pushed me into creating just a course. So I, my first course was Choose You because I started to see so many women were not making themselves a priority without feeling guilty. That was part of my stuck story too, as I was, you know, head, head down and focused on building this business and lost myself in the process. And I saw people lose relationships. I saw people lose their health. I saw divorce happen. And I just there's a better way. You can be both. And, and there's a way to do it without hustling 24-7, 365. And so that was really the goal in creating that course. And so I launched that a couple of times and it's in the vault right now. I'm, I'm working to, to rebrand it because it, it's still a great message. Um, so I think for the person who feels like they have something, just take a little baby step, just dip your toe in, um, get some good feedback, like just put your story out there. It's probably something you have gone through that now you want to help other people with. And so just start sharing that, bring people into that, that community. You don't have to have it all figured out. Listen, if I would have waited until I figured everything out, I wouldn't have anything right now because I'm still figuring it out, right? The market is always changing and social media is forever changing, but people will relate to your story, right? Facts tell, but stories are what sell and people really just relate to your story. So be willing to, to be authentic and, and share that story and just take a next step. 
I completely agree. I think sometimes when I share things on social media, I always have like this heart check afterwards. Like, <laughs> did I say the right thing or whatever? And it's not oftentimes yeah. those messages that are the most impactful and the most meaning. And, I, you know, I'm grateful for social media in the sense of I feel like I've learned so many things from people like I went through this whole like health transformation. And it was really through learning from other people what they were doing that led me to working with this functional medicine doctor who we recently had on the podcast. And now like I get so many questions from random people from all walks of life saying like, hey, you encouraged me to do this one thing. And it's felt so simple to me and so scary to even share that I was struggling in this way. But yet it created this breakthrough. And I was just one tiny little little step ahead. And so Martine, I love how you are willing to be vulnerable, even though you were just like one small little step ahead. Like you'll never, um, you never, like never underestimate the power of just like sharing and just one step ahead. That's all you have to be. Yeah. Um, but Martine, I just so appreciate you like sharing just so openly about um, finding your strengths and leaning into those and how being stuck is like, it's such a mindset thing first. And what can you do? Like you gave us one tip that everybody can take right now when they're feeling stuck. And you just said, go like outward, think about other people instead of going inward, me, 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 poor me, all these things. Like you gave, I mean, that tip alone right there, anybody can take and run with. So I just want to thank you so much for giving so freely really all of that. But if our listeners want to get connected with you, connect with your podcast, where can they go? Yeah, thanks. Um, the podcast is the Mompreneur Life Remixed Podcast. It's on all your favorite podcast listening apps. Um, you can also go to martinewilliams.com. There is a free uh, burnout quiz and break, breakthrough tips on there. So you can go on there to take the quiz and get the breakthrough tips. Um, and there's you know an opportunity to do a free clarity call. So martinewilliams.com, you can go on there. I love just having conversations and helping you get clarity on what your next step is. Everyone has a next step and we all have a hundred percent responsibility for that next step. So um, take the next step, whatever it is. So I'd love to connect with you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Go. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Martine. Martine. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, and I'm on Instagram at Martine Free Williams. That's where you can find me on social. Perfect. Perfect. All right. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Rainmaker Family Show. If you're not a part of our mastermind yet, I want to say I think you're missing out. Our heart here at Rainmaker is to create total abundance for you. That's why we're offering a free one-on-one family freedom design session for you, our faithful listener. Yeah, if you want to hop on a call with our team, see if it's a good fit to build a business that creates time freedom for you financial abundance and helps you leave that thriving family legacy. That's what we're all about in our mastermind. You can grab a time on our team's calendar at rainmakerfamily.com slash mastermind. Again, that's rainmakerfamily.com slash mastermind.